So, as you said, uh, my name is Evan Landman. I'm a transit planner with Jarrett Walker & Associates. We're a small transit planning firm based in Portland, Oregon. And our, our core competency is network design plans for transit agencies around the country. Um, you'll hear a little bit more from Christoph later about one in particular that we did in Houston. But, you know, in general, our role is to help transit agencies rethink the way that they've designed their network and, you know, to provide support and suggestion about ways they could be doing things differently. And so one of the key um, issues that we run into in this work is actually communicating what we're doing. Um, how do we clearly communicate the trade-offs that we're making um, and the advantages that different network scenarios offer? And so we can use network maps to do this. This is kind of the most conventional way. You know, we show two different maps, before and after, um, you know, high ridership, low ridership, uh, high resources, low resources, different years, different infrastructure scenarios. And that's what we've done here. Uh, this is a project that we're working on in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so on the left here, you see a network designed to focus on expanding the coverage area of the network across the widest uh, possible area. On the right, you see one that um, focuses on building a strong but you know, more contracted frequent network. But there are a few problems with this approach. Um, and, well, I mean, here they are. So maps have a learning curve, and not everybody is particularly comfortable with them. Uh, you have to understand how to read a map. You have to know what the benefits of frequency are. You have to be told that red lines mean frequency and green lines mean less frequent. And so there's a learning curve there that not everybody has the time or inclination to, um, to take on. Any change that we make represents a disruption in people's everyday lives. You know, this is something that's going to inconvenience people either permanently you know, through, um, you know, through service cuts to different areas or at least temporarily as they must learn a new network. And so we really have to you know, enable them to have full information about the change that we're proposing so that, they, so that they can provide informed and actionable input on that. So we can try to quantify it. This is another approach that we do all the time. We can say, you know, what percentage of the service area's population and jobs are near frequent service? What percentage of them are near any service? And we can show those trade-offs, but this is still an abstraction to a lot of people. Not everybody is comfortable thinking about, um, you know, how many people are in the whole region, what percentage of them uh, are near a bus line, and we have to explain things like walk distance and buffering and, you know, these kind of technical things that not everybody in the public needs to know, wants to know, frankly even cares about. So. Here's a different approach that we've really been excited about for years, and now with Remix, we're finally getting to start to realize in our practice. Um, some of you may be familiar with the concept of an isochrone. It's basically a visualization of travel time backwards. How far can you get in a given time period from an origin point? Um, we call this a map of people's liberty and opportunity because it represents how much of their city and all of the resources and opportunities within that city are uh, conveniently available to them. You know, how many jobs can I get to from my house? I could potentially have any of those um, within you know, a 60 minute travel time. But beyond that isochrone, that's when it starts to become less convenient and I might consider other travel options. So, you know, the simplest possible isochrone is just uh, how far can I walk from where I am in different time periods. So, uh, this is just represented as a circle because right now Remix doesn't have uh, network routing for pedestrians yet. But you know, we hope anyways that this is something that they'll focus on developing in the future. So you know, if you add a transit line, this is just a simple um, transit line with three stops, you can see that bubble start to expand and more of that area becomes accessible within each of those time steps. Um, this, is, you know, this is all generated with Jane, the isochrone tool Remix is building. And so as you can see, just the sheer area accessible within the 45 minute and 60 minute bands uh, expands. And so this just tells me that I can use transit to get to all of these different places that I couldn't get to if I was just walking. So now we can add a second transit route and you can see my liberty, my opportunity, and all the riches of the city that I might want to access uh, expanding. And so if we think about this as a simple network, uh, this just shows you, you know, begins to communicate in a visual, very simple way how much of the stuff that's out there that I might want to do uh, can I really do if I really want to use transit. Um, and we found that to be a powerful concept, but we've never actually been able to implement this as part of scenario planning. We've never been able to show people the trade-offs between different scenarios in this way. And so there have been a few isochrone tools in the past. Some of you might have seen Magnificent. I think Conveil has developed some tools. But none of them had 
you know, had the speed and flexibility for us to use in scenario planning because they all have a common requirement, a schedule. And usually when we're doing conceptual alternatives, we're designing scenarios, and we're seeking public and stakeholder input, we don't have a schedule yet. That's something that comes down the line because it's time consuming and expensive, and you know, we have to have the plan in place before we can schedule it. So this has made isochrones pretty impractical as a real tool for us because it's just the wrong part the wrong point in the project to deploy the tools that have been out there. You know, we, can't, uh, we can't build a GTFS feed for every scenario that quickly. With Remix, with Remix we're able to do that, but still developing uh, tools using Open Trip Planner, all of this kind of stuff has been too slow. We really needed something that didn't require a lot of coding that we could just you know, drop into a project. And so Remix is starting to give us those tools. So I want to tell you a little bit about what we've done with it so far and what we're hoping to do in the future. So I just cooked up these two scenarios so you could sort of see um, what our vision for showing these trade-offs is. So this is uh, the Transit Network in Portland, Oregon. This is a GTFS uh, import from late August, just prior to the new light rail lines opening. Uh, they'll probably want to update that at some point. So I placed Jane in a location served by just one transit route, the 10 Herald. It's an infrequent route. It comes about every half hour during the midday. Um, and I put, I put the pointer here just so you could see the impact of one small change on my liberty, my opportunity, and my ability to access all of the different great things about the city. So this is the existing network, no change. Scenario two, I've changed uh, this one route from 30 minute frequency to five minute frequency. And you can see that isochrone representing my access distance expands dramatically. Now, there are other ways we could communicate this, right? We could say, oh, my travel time from this point to downtown, you know, improves by four and a half minutes. We could say, um, you know, we could say that the number of people near the frequent network is expanded because we've added a new element to it. But what we can't say is, if I'm standing right at this point at, I mean, it's an intersection called Lad Circle in a very lush garden neighborhood of Portland, we can't tell the person living there, this is what you get. And for members of the public, we want to be able to explain to them exactly that so they can tell us what they think of our plan. And so we think this is a pretty powerful way of showing that contrast, of showing two different scenarios. So you know, by comparing these scenarios, we can visually see the impact of a frequency change, of, of rerouting, of any of the changes we might want to make. And I can pick all the points in each of those color bands that are meaningful to me, a community college, you know, um, my kid's school, anything that I might want to get to, I can see you know, if, um, if my time to get to those from my origin point improves. And so previously, uh, there, you know, agencies have tried to do things like before and after trip planners, but that requires actually putting in different trips and you know, thinking about which routing is best for you, and it's a little bit cumbersome. We really think that this is the simplest, fastest way to communicate this information. So we've used this once so far um, with TriMet. Uh, we conducted a workshop looking at stop spacing along a proposed BRT corridor. And so we were varying two uh, there were two variables that we were changing here, right? We were changing the number of stops and their location along the line, and then the speed of that line. Uh, it could go a little faster the less often it stopped because there was less dwell time required. And so what we found is, A, the, um, you know, the speed variation we were looking at didn't make a huge difference, but we also um, wanted to pioneer using these tools and using these visualizations in really showing scenario trade-offs. And so this is the first time we'd been able to do this. So we produced some contrasting images and we put them on a poster so that our stakeholders could look at them side by side and compare. And so here are two of them. This, this is the most dramatic contrast. So it's pretty dramatic, right? Especially when you flip back and forth. Uh, but we found a few things here. Um, we presented them side by side and we actually found it very difficult for the stakeholders to tell the difference when they weren't able to see sort of the before and after, you know, flipping back and forth this way. And we also found that while they found the visualization compelling and easy to understand, um, because they weren't actually able to locate Jane in their own important, you know, in the places that were important to their daily lives, they wanted uh, some quantification of that information. So we had chosen four locations along the line and presented them an isochrone of each one. And we, you know, we kind of explained to them, uh, this is how the isochrone of access improves from these four locations. You know, it was a community college, um, two important transfer points, and I think a point near the end of the line, right? You know, the type of places that you would uh, run a kind of standard travel time analysis from, 
But the isochrone tool, while it presented a compelling visualization, wasn't personal enough to them. And so we have a few ideas for how this could be improved. The first thing is just using it to conduct an access analysis, figuring out how many people and jobs are within those isochrones, and being able to say something like, from this community college with its 30,000 students, if we make this change, uh, 16,000 more people are within an hour's distant, an hour's travel time, right? We think that's compelling and very simple information for people to use to make decisions about how they want to provide input on a transit plan. So we have a few ideas for next steps. This is very early in development with Remix, and most of the implementations we've seen of isochrones in other places have either been this sort of simple access analysis or just um, pure visualization. That's what Mapnificent does, and you know, it's just, it just shows you your isochrone of access. Um, but we, we, see some, we, we see some real great possibilities here in public engagement. So first, talking about access analysis, um, I already went through that a bit, but um, instead of just doing something like a uh, travel time matrix, which requires people to, un to actually think in terms of what you know, a three minute benefit from one place to another place looks like, uh, we can actually start to quantify how many more people can get to them in those time steps. So one thing that we find pretty common in our projects is you know, late in the game when we're presenting two alternatives or final plan and comparing it to the existing network, um, we'll often be asked to select 10 important places and do a matrix of how the travel time changes between each one. And you end up with this big square of colored circles. Um, and it's supposed to tell people how their access and how their travel, their mo personal mobility is improved by this plan. And so we say, oh, it's three minutes better between this point and this point, two minutes better here to here, a minute worse here to here. But it doesn't give them, A, the context about how long it actually takes. These aren't always relevant points. Um, and really, it's sort of an abstraction of what is really important, which is people's personal mobility and their feeling of whether they can access the things that they want to go to. And we're not very good at picking, you know, picking the most important places. People know where they want to go. And so we should give them that ability. So the next step we see is presenting two networks side by side and showing those isochrones in tandem, uh, allowing you to drop a pin on a map and show both of those side by side or as a flipboard and for any point, you know, for any point in the map so that we don't have to tell people what are the important parts of their city. We can let them say, this is what I think is important and figure out you know, which plan works for them. And then they can provide feedback informed by that informed by those visualizations of their actual access, rather than our personal judgments about what places they think should be important. And so the last thing that we've really started thinking about is how to, uh, how to communicate information about location choices using this tool. So you know, right now, you can get your walk score and your transit score and all of these different kind of quantifications about uh, picking a house, moving a business to a new location, anything where you're making a you know, property buying decision. But what really, uh, when we present these, these isochrones to people, what we really find is that people, you know, people who have recently moved will say things like, oh, well, yeah, I just moved and I, you know, I moved from a house next to a frequent, every 15 minute bus line to a house next to a less frequent bus line and I didn't know until I moved there, right? Uh, I had no idea that I was getting half the service at my new location and I used to take transit all the time, but now I can't do it anywhere. Uh, or people who have just moved to the city, right? They'll, they'll move to Portland, for example, and they'll think, oh, it's a transit paradise. I can just locate anywhere, and I can live you know, with the same level of convenience as I did in San Francisco or in New York, uh, which is obviously not true, and not true in most cities for all of the city. So we're thinking about how can we expose the hidden transportation costs that are bundled into our housing and location decisions? How can we show people in a visual and also quantitative way you know, what are they getting from putting that pin in a new place? And how can they, you know, how is their ability to access the places they need to go on transit compromised or improved by the different location decisions that they're making? And so we're really excited about this technology. You know, we've just, we've only had a few years to think about it, and that's without even having our hands really on it. And I think that as Remix continues to develop it, and other, you know, other developers work on it, and they kind of look at each other and what they're doing, what planners are doing, uh, th this is just a really exciting area. Um, it's a really exciting set of tools, and we can't wait to see where it goes next. Um, so thanks to Remix for giving us the opportunity to try it out ourselves.